Uh, welcome on board uh, of the Tritone boat to start uh, the transfer activity in the marine protect area of Capomilazzo of the Plastic Buster MPA project. Uh, um, Tritone boat uh, is an uh, um, anti-pollution uh, local uh, um, boat managed by a local company, uh, working mainly on uh, recovery spill oil, but uh, in the last uh, period has uh, engaged by the marine protect area also to uh, mitigate action of marine litter, uh, such as cleaning of uh, beach and uh, seafloor. And uh, now we start with uh, this project uh, with the team of Plastic Buster, uh, ISPRA, Università of Siena, Stazione Zoologica Anton Dorn and uh, Mayo Exd uh, to carry out the monitoring activity in the youngest of the marine protect area uh, of the Italian Sea. Um, here we are in the scenario of the uh, marine protect area, especially in the Uh, sea zone uh, as a level of uh, protection and uh, we, we work for four days uh, to apply the uh, monitoring uh, uh, following the uh, standardized uh, approach that has been uh, uh, planned in the Plastic Busters MPA in order to transfer to uh, other marine protect, marine, marine protect area Uh, this uh, protocol uh, to contrast marine litter. Uh, now, today we have the uh, we have uh, the lucky to start in the World Ocean Day, and it is a pleasure that uh, MPA with the manager and we, uh, with all uh, uh, personnel involved in the MPA uh, give the opportunity. Uh, with uh, their uh, resorts and their uh, sustain to uh, introduce and to apply this uh, methodology in this uh, youngest uh, marine protect area. Giovanni, Giovanni that is the president of the marine protect area. Uh, now introduce uh, the description of this uh, wonderful uh, area and uh, we thanks a lot uh, the uh, this manager uh, because uh, they have a lot of interest to contrast the marine litter in, uh, in the Mediterranean Sea. Right. Ci troviamo. Ci troviamo. Allora, ringrazio il, il, i promotori di questo progetto, ringrazio tutti diciamo, i partner del Plastic Buster, noi siamo una delle aree marine protette, l'ultima costituita in Italia, in questo momento ci troviamo in, una, in zona C ma siamo vicinissimo alla zona B e crediamo moltissimo come area marina protetta da quando ci siamo istituiti da circa un anno nelle potenzialità che hanno questi progetti. Pensiamo che questi progetti sono fondamentali per il recupero dell'area marina protetta e per quanto è per il rilancio dell'area marina protetta. Ringrazio tantissimo chi ha creduto in questo progetto, tantissimo l'Università di Siena, tantissimo l'ISPRA e in particolar modo tutti i partner completi di questo progetto internazionale che è qualcosa che permette all'area marina protetta di entrare nel circuito dei progetti internazionali e crediamo tantissimo nelle metodologie utilizzate che oggi saranno, saranno spiegate. Noi siamo una delle poche aree marine protette di una dimensione abbastanza ridotta, 752 ettari, ma siamo anche una delle poche che abbiamo una zona BS, che sarebbe una zona di riserva speciale, oltre alla zona A e la zona eh, B. Spero che questo progetto sia lo possiamo portare a compimento nel breve tempo possibile e che questo sia per tutte le aree marine protette italiane un punto di partenza per questo tipo di metodologia che veramente sta cominciando a dare grandissimi risultati nell'area marina protetta di Capo Milazzo. for the fantastic uh, hospitality in this marvelous area and as uh, I was previously said from uh, Teresa and uh, Giovanni today we have uh, the opportunity in this very special day for the ocean worldwide because uh, uh, today is the ocean day 
we have the uh, fantastic opportunity to transfer all the methodology that we have already developed in the testing phase of the Plastic Buster MPA project in this new area. And uh, uh, as you know, probably the Plastic Buster MPA is a med interreg project for years long with uh, 15 partners and 70 associate partners that are covering the complete cycle of the marine litter from monitoring, as we are doing today, the measure in terms of mitigation and particularly the improvement of the governance in the marine protected area. What we have the opportunity to do in the next four days is apply the harmonized monitoring approach of Plastic Buster that was uh, uh, published in the toolkit uh, that is avail available on the website in a simultaneous way in the different environment. In particular, the, the uh, monitoring approach that we are doing today are covering three main uh, activity. The first one will be the application of the manta trolls to collect uh, microplastic in the water surface and simultaneously we are doing the floating litter monitoring and the biota observation. But let we start to introduce the first uh, activity that will be the monitoring with uh, uh, my, the microplastic using the mantra trolls. The mantra trolls is the common uh, monitoring tools used also for the marine strategy framework directive and IMAP indicator in the Mediterranean area. And the Manta is a, a special equipment, uh, as you can see, with a net of 30 meters long and with a mesh of 30, 30 micro, uh, mi micrometers with an open mount of 60 centimeters. What we can do during the uh, monitoring activity, we are doing several transit inside and outside the marine protected area. Each transit will be doing for 30 minutes at the velocity of two nodes of the boat in order to collect all the microplastic present on the water surface. It's very important to see that in order to calculate the amount of water filter from the manta, we use a fluximeter in order to see exactly the amount of uh, water that we have filtrated. And uh, uh, at the moment we are quite lucky because the weather conditions are not too bad, so we have to operate in all cases with calm sea and uh, even uh, uh, we can apply some uh, uh, correction of the uh, uh, wind if there is the wind very, very strong. Uh, at the moment we have to do all this activity for 30 minutes. But as I uh, have already said previously, the very important point is to operate in the same time with other two monitoring activity. And the two monitoring activity will be do in front of the boat uh, in which we have simultaneously monitoring of the presence of biota. We have two observers, one of the left side and another one on the right side that are localizing eventually biota observation during the cruise activity. All the detail will be reported in a specific uh, sampling sheet from the two observers. And the main important point uh, that we have a simultaneously monitoring on floating microliters using a common approach uh, using from Medsi Liter and other uh, European uh, approaches. And I'm passing the, the, the microphone to Cristina Panti that will introduce in detail the methodology applied. Okay, now we are contemporarily doing the floating microliter survey. We just uh, uh, write it down the um, coordinates and the time of uh, start of the activity that is simultaneous to the month of floating. Uh, so if with two observers, uh, one looking at the sea and the other one uh, writing down the categories of litter, uh, we will uh, monitor the sea surface uh, for litter, which is include artificial polymer material, clothes, metals, cardboard, and so on. We will monitor uh, objects larger than 2.5 centimeters in a, a distance covered 
uh, along the transit of the same length of the man patrol transit and uh, we will uh, uh, observe six meters three on the side uh, on the right side three on the left side uh, according to the um, monitoring protocol of Medsiliter and uh, the developed protocol of uh, the task group from the Marine Strategy Framework Directive. So, observing the sea surface, we haven't seen any litter so far. Uh, as soon as we, we, we will see the litter, we will write it down the uh, category, uh, for instance, artificial poly material, and then the uh, object where we it, it is recognizable, uh, the object that we are uh, seeing, the um, dimension, the color, and of course the GPS time in order to uh, localize the object in the transect. Then uh, we will, uh, in, uh, in contemporary to the uh, macro litter monitoring and the manta we will also perform the biota monitoring. So two observers are now scanning the uh, horizon to looking at the mm, megafauna and associated species such as uh, marine mammals, seabirds, uh, sea turtles and so on. Uh, two observers that uh, they uh, observe the sea surface uh, of 180 meters and 80 degrees each in order to cover the entire area of the sea. And then uh, we will, uh, uh, in after uh, half an hour, we will uh, uh, take Amanda the month on board and we will process the sample. Okay, so we haven't seen any litter floating so far. We are doing the sampling activity with the manta, as we have said previously. As you can see, the manta is uh, sampling on the left side of the boat. The, the, the sea is very, very calm, and uh, the collection activity will be act for 30 minutes at two nodes, as previously said. It's very important to say that uh, this uh, protocol that we apply in Plastic Buster uh, represents an innovative approach in order to collect on the same time data of the presence of this microplastic on the sea surface and simultaneously detect uh, the presence of macro litter. That is a very important uh, point uh, because in several previous studies, especially realized in the Pelago Sanctuary and the, the Prat Archipelago, we have uh, uh, detected a very high correlation between the two parameters, so that uh, confirm the presence in the same area of macro and microplastic. But the most important and innovative approach of the Plastic Buster project is to potentially define the impact on biodiversity. The impact on biodiversity can be performed, as you can see also in the next day, not only to measure itself the presence of uh, biota from seabirds to marine mammals and turtles in the study area, but even uh, to try to understand if there is any potential impact, negative impact of macro and microplastic on the species. And then in the next day, we show in detail how we can eventually evaluate the ingestion of macro and microplastic in bioindicator species 
but also applying a new approach that is called a threefold monitoring approach, we can evaluate the potential toxicological effect produced by immanent organisms. Then we are just waiting the finish of the sampling activity and we are moving back close to the manta and we we are doing uh, the uh, final phase of the uh, procedure. When the time will be run, we can bring the manta on the boat and uh, processing the manta with all the detail that we'll show later on. I will add just a few words to Teresa at in explaining this very important marine protected area. Okay, and uh, now in, um, I want to underline that in these four days uh, we will cover uh, the entire surface on the marine protected area. Uh, this area has for the peculiar position uh, um, as uh, the eastern and the western uh, part with a different uh, level of accumulation uh, that uh, could be related to uh, linked to uh, ocean oceanographic factors, uh, circulation of the water uh, rather than uh, the coastal use. In fact, uh, in uh, this part, the, this uh, uh, not uh, mainly exposed uh, to the flower and so to other human impact. Uh, the uh, marine litter that we will start to monitor in the last October was lower than in the other part. And uh, probably this is a, a specific of uh, uh, this uh, marine protected area. And for this, uh, uh, several mitigation action could be uh, proposed in the next uh, four days. Uh, to real sustain our, uh, our uh, ocean. In the same time, uh, another team of the Plastic Busters uh, worked uh, on the uh, seafloor to monitor uh, the same transect uh, regarding especially all the aspects to the uh, marine litter according to the last uh, joint uh, listed uh, uh, categories that will be planned also within the plastic busters but also within the marine strategy framework, framework directive and uh, so uh, now for is is very important uh, start in the ocean world day i repeat and uh, uh, underline this that also christina uh, tell before uh, because now the human impact uh, creates a loss of biodiversity in the ocean uh, and uh, only work, uh, work working together, uh, together the marine protected area, together with all the stakeholders, uh, we can uh, contrast uh, really the marine litter problem in the ocean. Uh, so we complete uh, other uh, um, activity also showed uh, specific protocol uh, that uh, we want uh, we have the pleasure to pass the microphone also to our main partners of plastic buster project mio and particularly with our friend tommy vlacogiani that will go be in detail on other aspect of the floating litter monitoring thank you christina nice to be here with all of you today um, basically, I will touch upon the topic of uh, linking the observations for macro litter with the, the sources of litter and how this can be eventually tackled. So basically, the overall idea is to try and record on the recording sheet uh, that Christina is right now uh, having in front of her, uh, in a high level of detail, the different litter items that are seen floating on the sea surface 
And uh, these litter items, for example, can be carrier bags, they can be uh, drinking bottles from water, they could be uh, floating cigarette butts, for example. And uh, later on, when back in our laboratories, uh, we can associate these different litter items with specific human-induced activities like smoking, like uh, tourism and recreational activities, uh, fishing-related activities, and then this uh, whole um, approach allows us to design in a tailored ma tailor made manner uh, prevention and mitigation actions. And this is the whole idea of the floating macro litter monitoring. Go here. Okay. Uh, yeah, why not? Uh, just tell me what to do. Okay, so we can we can chat a little bit. Okay. Then so, sorry for this technical problem, uh, we come back to this uh, very important concept how the monitoring will be the real guide to design specific mitigation action. And uh, here we have, as I said before, the opportunity to have one of the main experts at Mediterranean level of measure. And I would like very much to invite Tommy to give some detail about the measure that we have already test and adopt in the Plastic Buster MPA project. Thank you, Christina. So indeed, uh, prevention and mitigation measures lie at the heart of the Plastic Busters MPA's project. And uh, the whole idea of the project is to address the overall management cycle of marine litter. So basically, we have already been testing uh, 10 different types of measures dealing with different types of human-induced pressures. So for example, uh, several measures have been dealing with the issue of single-use plastics. And uh, for example, in um, a protected area in Greece, um, we have been dealing with uh, muscle nets, which are included in the single-use plastics directive, because the directive tackles also fishing gear. And in Slovenia, for example, we have been testing the measure dealing with um, soups free, single-use plastics free beach bars. While, for example, in Spain, another interesting approach is being currently piloted that deals with uh, reusable uh, cups in uh, festivals in a protected area of the Delta of Ebro Delta. And these are just some examples of the types of actions we are implementing. Uh, in addition to that, I would like also to highlight that uh, recently at pan-European level, uh, a new list for recording macro litter items has been introduced and has been adopted, which allows us to design in a better manner, in a more tailored manner, the different prevention and mitigation actions, simply because this list uh, clearly links the different litter items with the human-induced sources. So, for example, each item is being associated, for example, with agriculture-related activity, fishing-related activity, aquaculture-related activities, tourism and recreational-related activities. And therefore, this information is valuable in deciding what types of measures should be implemented on the ground. example how for example the beach litter monitoring and the application of the new joint list can really operate in terms to design specific mitigation action especially from this new marine protected area but now 
we have also other 20 minutes of sampling and we would like to tell you the story of the potential impact on biodiversity. We are moving on the other part and as you can see here we are already doing the sampling activity of microplastic and the main question that we try to cover in the Plastic Buster project is to define the potential impact of marine litter starting from microplastic to large plastic items on the marine biodiversity. And that is a very important and uh, new topic that we have in the project. Just to give you some detail, microplastic can be ingested from marine organisms starting from uh, invertebrate to fish moving to the large, more charismatic animals that we have in the Mediterranean Sea, such for example, whales. And uh, the project uh, have uh, this very great novelty to apply this uh, new methodology that we call threefold monitoring approach on the different bioindicator organisms that we have in this marvelous uh, biodiversity world that is the Mediterranean Sea. Just to give some example, a marine organism such as a fish living in this area can be undergo to the ingestion of microplastic. The microplastic can be detected, as we can see in the next day, with a sample procedure that we allowed to mm, detect the presence in the gastrointestinal tract of the marine organism. But the novelty that we have applied in the project is to go forward, try to understand the real toxicological effect produced from the ingestion of microplastic. In which way? For example, detecting the transfer of chemicals from the microplastic to the tissues of the organism, measuring plastic additive, or go more in deeply analyzing the toxicological effect produced from microplastic on the organism, measuring several biochemical endpoints that we call biomarkers. And so in the next day, we can have some experience on this. But uh, one of the most important challenge of the project is to investigate also the potential impact of macroplastic, and macroplastic on endangered species, such as the common indicator used in the Mediterranean Sea, that is the caretta caretta, that is the common indicator used from the Marine Strategy Framework Directive at the Mediterranean level from the IMAP indicators, but even to the most charismatic organisms such as, uh, for example, the whales and other cetacean species. In that way, we are using a more complex approach, analyzing both stranded organisms, so in other way, the animals that are arriving on the beach after the death, but even we have developed new approach using the skin biopsy approach that allowed to collect small skin of tissues on marine mammals such as whales, dolphins and sperm whale and investigate in that the eventual toxicological effect but that, that will be part of the next day of activity. So actually we are starting to proceed to finalizing the sampling of the microplastic collecting procedure. After 30 minutes of uh, activity of the manta in the water with the calm sea as we have uh, today, the manta will be moved from the water to the air and we have to do several steps. The first step that we have to do and we can see in the next uh, few minutes will be to clean completely the net because as you can imagine the net will work in on the water but part of the microplastic will be trapped on the manta itself and that we are just looking this first part of the activity. As you can see, the manta 
are removing from the water and you can have a look also of the fluximeter that is in the middle of the manta. The data collect from the fluximeter will be allowed to define exactly the amount of water, liter of water that the manta have filtrated. And that is a very important parameter in order to understand the amount of microplastic uh, from water. And at this moment, Matteo are passing to uh, Federica the data of fluximeter. That the fluximeter data will be extremely important in order to understand the amount of microplastic present in the, the total sampling activity. As mentioned before, it's very important to clean completely the net of the manta. As I remember, the, the manta is three meters longer and they have a mesh of 30, uh, 330 microns. So all plastic items and the dimension under 330 microns will be trapped in the, the, uh, the net itself. That is uh, cleaning water with this and then what is the most important thing, we have a kind of container at the end of the manta, as you can see here, that is our sampling sample. So that the next step will be to collect this bottom part of the manta net and proceeding in order to preserve for the future chemical analysis that will be done in the lab. So in a minute we will pass the sample to Cristina Panti that uh, with the others uh, person of the team of Plastic Buster will be described in deeply how to process the sample for microplastic. I pass the microphone to Yes, now the, the manta will be put on board. We will uh, uh, rinse from the outside. That is very important to, that should be rinsed from the outside because to avoid environmental contamination that we can include in the samples. Then we will retrieve the samples in the code end of the manta, trying to collect all the particles and all the plankton that we can we have collected. So now the guys are rinsing well the, the code end where you have the mesh, a net with the mesh sides of 330 microns, the same of the entire net. So retrieving the samples, then we will pour the entire sample in a becker. and then we will proceed to filter the sample to collect and store it properly to be then analyzed in the laboratory. So now we put the sample in the backer. So we can see that the water is really eutrophic in this moment because uh, very few plankton organisms uh, have been collected. Now we rinse well the code end in order to not lose any particle. And uh, we should uh, uh, just say that for this live streaming, we perform a 20 minutes manta troll. Uh, but usually we perform 30 minutes, but because of the time we reduce uh, the, the manta troll uh, duration. By the way, we will normalize the uh, results to the distance covered and the filtered uh, water in order to obtain a normalized data. Now the, we are going to sieve the results of the code end 
on a sieve with the same mesh of the manta, so 330 meters, microns, sorry. Uh, so we can now, we can see the sample. <laughs> okay, we collect every particle that can be remain in the in the becker. And uh, now we can see this is the results of the manta troll. We can see very few uh, presence of uh, or planktonic organisms, mainly small copepods and some uh, larvacea. And apparently we cannot see any microplastics, but then uh, we will uh, observe under the microscope to understand if there are microplastics. And then we now uh, collect all the sample in a proper jar, in a glass jar, and we will put uh, ethanol to avoid the the sample to be degraded and to be uh, to be well preserved for the uh, analysis in the lab. Okay. Okay. Once in the lab, the samples will be uh, filtered again and then we will be observed under a stereo microscope and under the stereo microscope the uh, microplastic samples will be uh, microplastic particles will be isolated in uh, some uh, according to the availability of uh, the of the lab in petri dishes that is better if they are uh, glass petri dishes and then will be measured uh, after the um, uh, the, the identification of the party will be measured and characterized for shape, dimension, and also for polymer. So the chemical characterization of the plastic uh, will be carried out. Then, in the end, the final concentration of the microplastics will be normalized to the number of items per square kilometers. And, uh, and it's possible also to weight the microplastics in order to understand the mass of the plastic floating on the sea surface. So this is the result of the, our sample. So apparently it looks like it's a clean sample, but we will know once in the lab. Okay, so, so the, the data with the microplastic, microplastic will allow to compare the data in, uh, according to the floating microliter, floating microliter to correlate the occurrence and the distribution and abundance of the microplastics and microliter on the sea surface in the same area. Uh, so these uh, results will be compared and then we also uh, overlap the data on uh, uh, biota sampling and biota survey with the occurrence of plastics and microplastics on the sea surface in order to establish some risk, uh, to do some risk analysis and to uh, obtain some map of risk uh, to biota. That is one of the main aim of the plastic buster projects. So I will uh, I pass the uh, to Cristina Fossi, where we shall uh, talk uh, more in deep about the further development of the project. Ah. I would like just to summarize a little bit what is the main message that we have from the, as this activity. As mentioned before, it's very, very important to join the monitoring activity in marine protected area 
with the complete uh, uh, agreement with the project manager of the area and today we have uh, the very great opportunity to have with us Giovanni that is the main uh, coordinator of the area and from the monitoring activity that represent a diagnosis of the presence and the impact of macro and microplastic on the marine protected area, as said before from my friends Tommy, we can design in this area and in other marine protected area of the Mediterranean Sea a specific mitigation action. So we strongly believe that the main outcome of this project is join together the effort from the scientific point of view but also to the science policy interface in order to better manage to better manage and to have a better governance or the marine protected area all around the Mediterranean Sea and I have to advise that the same activity of transferring happening in the same time in several other marine protected area in Mediterranean Sea, some such as uh, the Bocca di Bonifacio in Corsica in France, some such as Lucini National Park in Bruyun in Croatia, such as Karaburun in Albania, and we hope in the next few months to implement in several other marine protected areas. And uh, I, just to conclude, I would like to invite again Giovanni to give some final words concerning the potential activity in the area and then maybe together all the team of Plastic Buster in this ocean day we can do a kind of small movie photograph to remember this first streaming in this area. So I will pass the floor to Giovanni. Giovanni, you want to just say a few words to conclude and then we'll... Grazie a tutti, è stata una bellissima giornata. Speriamo di riprendere a presto, a breve, un'altra di queste giornate straordinarie e che la ricerca faccia il suo corso e che questa metodologia rimanga veramente una delle cose più importanti che abbiamo fatto all'inizio di quest'area marina protetta. Grazie a tutti. And thank you and I also to thank uh, the crew of this boat because also it is not a research vessel. Uh, it's work uh, wonderful uh, with all uh, our activities uh, and also the coast guard that uh, follow uh, all the all the activities uh, and uh, now now we we move towards the other team that uh, uh, carry out the underwater activity in the same area rather than under uh, underlining the a threshold approach because in the same area the group of uh, underwater team carried out transect uh, on the seabed. Uh, thank you to all the team of the University of Siena, of the ISPRA, the Stazione Zoologica and the Mayo EXD and the manager of the Marine Protect Area and we hope they can continue to apply this methodology to monitor the marine litter in the marine protect area of Capo Milazzo.